So, Quen3, uh, we have already seen how Quen3 is a powerful model. So, Quen3 is available on Kaggle. Now, what it means for us, how we can use it, this is one of the simplest videos that we are going to see. So, we have this platform known as Kaggle where there are various competitions going on. But apart from the competitions, what I'm more interested in Kaggle is the data sets that you can get access to. So of course there are so many competitions that goes on and there are pretty good competitions with a very good uh, reward. For example this Kowinski price is 1 million, ARC price 2025 is 725k US dollars and all these uh, competitions are going on. But what I'm more interested in is the different data sets that you can get your hands on. Now they are integrating the models as well and you can see that we have different models that you can use in the Kaggle. Now as a matter of fact we have some notebooks as well. Kaggle notebooks that you can use like your Google Collab notebooks and they are giving a pretty good generous amount of GPUs to use. So we are going to do just that. We are going to test out Quen three on Kaggle. We are excited to share that Quen 3, the long awaited next generation of LLMs in the Quen series is now live. This collection includes a variety of models built to provide strong performance and flexibility for a wide range of AI tasks. With different model sizes and advanced reasoning, Quen 3 is suitable for diverse applications. Now this model offers Apache 2.0, which means you can use it the way you like it. You can customize it, you can fine tune it. They also excel in human aligned interactions, making them ideal for creative writing, multi tone conversations, role play, and instruction following. Now, we have seen in this video, my last video, that we have six instruct models, and then we have two spares mixture of experts models. So, two 35 billion with 22 billion activated parameters. We have three billion, 30 billion parameters, excuse me with 3 billion activated parameters. Now it has a dual mode performance which means it can switch between thinking and non-thinking. And how does uh, it looks like on the code? We are going to test this out as well. It has advanced reasoning uh, agentic capabilities. It integrates smoothly with tools and excels in agent-based environments supporting complex and autonomous flows. It has more than 100 plus language, about 119 languages. It even has my mother tongue and it makes for makes a global uh, applications, makes it easy for developing global applications like translation and multilingual chatbots. Now let's go ahead and test this out. So this is Quen 3 on Kaggle and you have seen the strong performance of Quen 3. Now we need to use the latest version of transformers. If not, then it's going to be pretty difficult and you would get this error Quen 3. So they are giving some special parameters. So for the thinking mode, what you need to do is you need to do enable thinking is true, of course. And then you can use this temperature or you should use this temperature. Temperature of 0.6, top P of 0.95, top K of 20 and minimum P of 0. For non-thinking mode, we need to enable thinking to false, obviously. Then the temperature should be a, should be kept a little higher, top P a little lower than the thinking mode, top K and minimum P is zero. You can adjust the presence penalty as well between a zero to two to reduce the endless repetitions that you get. Now it has the output length of 32K tokens and it's pretty good. It is also, you know, it also excels in the math problem. For for example, you, if you put this, please uh, reason step by step and put your final answer within the box in this format. So there is one competition known as AI Amy, where we need to put the answers only. You can use this box. And uh, this is the model. So let's go ahead and test this out. So if you go to code and click on new notebook, then you would be able to go to a new notebook here. This is the Kaggle notebook. And here, let's go ahead and test this out. So the first thing that you need to do is select uh, an accelerator or a GPU. So if you click on settings accelerator, you can see that we have 
three GPUs here. So GPU T42 is what I've selected. Once you select that, you can see that uh, if you click here, you can see that we have two GPUs. Uh, each one is uh, 15 uh, gigabytes of, of RAM of GPU size, and that's pretty amazing. So 30 GB uh, size of GPU you get for free. I mean, for 30 hours per week, and that's enough for doing any uh, some sort of the basic works. Also, we get the CPU of 30 GB. Okay, so uh, we have a disk space as well of uh, 57 GB. So once we have selected this, uh, once you have selected this accelerator of uh, T4 GPU T4 into 2, what you need to do is click here to start the session. Now I've already started the session. Then you're going to start this code. So from transformers, we import the auto model for causal LM and the tokenizer. We import the Kaggle Hub as well. And then we take this model. So model name is Kaggle Hub dot model download. And this is the model that they have already released. So if you go here and if you go down, you would be able to select that particular model. So you can see that we have all sorts of models here. 0 0.6 billion, 1.7 billion, 14 billion, 235, 32, 4, 8 and all these sizes. So if you select any of these variations, you can get uh, the code for inference here. And that's pretty amazing. So let's go back to the notebook. So what you've done is we've imported the auto model uh, for causal LM and auto tokenizer. We import the Kaggle um, hub and then we download this model. So uh, let me run this. So this will download the model from this location that is inside or hosted uh, on Kaggle itself. You can put your own models, but you don't need it because it's already available inside of Kaggle. Next, we load up this tokenizer because uh, we need to use the tokenizer that will convert your text to tokens and tokens to text. So decode and encode, encode and decode, excuse me. So we put this model name and uh, this is loading the model itself. So using this class uh, or this method of auto model for a causal from pre-train and we put in the model name here. We uh, ask the model uh, this code to select the best data type so we put in auto here and device map is auto uh, it selects uh, the gpus here so once we have that if you run this this is going to load the uh, model so we have three checkpoints as you can see model one of three two of three and three of three these are safe tenses file each one is 4 gb so this is going to load this uh, three uh, files here Next, if we just print uh, the type of tokenizer and type of model, you can see that uh, the tokenizer is still Quen 2's tokenizer they are using, and uh, the model is Quen 3, so modeling Quen 3. Okay, now this is uh, preparing the input. So the input is this is my prompt, what is uh, 3 plus 89, and this is the format of the message. The role is user or assistant, and uh, the content is the prompt here. Next, uh, once we have this, we need to apply a chat template because we want uh, the template to be uh, in a particular form. We want the input to be in a particular format. For that, we're using the tokenizer.apply chat template. Uh, and we're putting the message here. Uh, we are saying tokenize is false. As of now, we don't want to tokenize it because we'll do that later. We are adding the generation prompt and uh, we are enabling thinking as well. This is where you can switch between thinking and non-thinking modes. So if you run this, we are going to see the messages here. So obviously this is the same message that we see here, but I want to show you this text. So when we say uh, tokenizer.apply chat template, then what we get is this. So this starts, you know, I'm start, it applies this uh, template. When you say tokenizer.apply chat template, this applies this template I'm start. Then we have the user. And then this is my prompt or the question that I've asked. This is I'm end. And there's a new line. And then we have I'm start assistance. So this is the whole applied chat template. This is a particular template that this model follows. So for other models, you will have other uh, chat templates. And you can see that we're using the tokenizer. And again, we are uh, using this tokenizer we are putting the model name so we are loading that appropriate tokenizer here 
okay so once we have the text with all uh, the all the different uh, things added a proper chat template then you are going to make this into a tensor file and then you're going to push this to the device okay so this is my model input so tokenizer we are giving the text here and uh, making this a tensor file uh, making this to tensors if you like and uh, then we are sending this to the device so if you have a look at the model inputs, we can see that these are the inputs. So these are the tensors uh, and you can see that this is sent to CUDA 0 or the first device. Next, this is a step of generation. So model.generate, we are extracting uh, the different key pair values or we are extracting the different keys of the or unpacking the different variables using this uh, double star uh, symbol here so model inputs and the max token that you're using is 32k tokens now if i start this generated id so this will generate the ids now if you look at the first id you will see a bunch of tensors here now these are not really helpful uh, i mean the tensors we want to really convert so what you have done is we have taken this uh, generated IDs, uh, the first generated IDs, and then we calculated the length of the model input files. And then uh, let's say uh, if you go and uh, have a look at the output uh, output IDs, if you see this generated IDs, so these are all the generated IDs. Now, as a matter of fact, let's say the first 200, you know, represents the inputs okay so we calculate that length and uh, as a matter of fact i can probably show you this so length of so the first 16 uh, numbers that we see on the generated ids that belongs to the input i mean the the question that we've asked or the text that we have sent so these are the 16 number of uh, numbers that you see so we don't want that 16 so we are taking everything after the 16 so these are the generated outputs and we are making this a list a python list okay so now if we go ahead and see the output ids you will see that these are excluding the input that we have sent these are just the outputs now once we have this output we need to calculate uh, the index okay of the character this so this number is the thinking number so this will segregate uh, the thinking part and the answer part so if you calculate the index of this number this index comes out to be 401 so anything before 401 so when you say tokenizer dot decode then output uh, ids anything before index of 401 these are the thinking content okay we are skipping the special tokens because we don't want this to be appearing here because this is the final output that we're trying to print and you're stripping any uh, uh, slash ends or new line characters here the content is everything after the index okay so if i print it this will be more clear so you can see that the thinking content is anything which starts from the think and which ends with think so after the slash think we had uh, a number which was this number one five one six six eight so on that number it split uh, the entire thing into two so the first thing is this think to think is the thinking content and after the think is the actual content so the sum of three and uh, 89 is calculated as follows and the answer is given here in the 92. So I hope this makes it clear. Now, this is a very basic video, but given an understanding of this basic format, you will be now able to use this model to a greater extent. Now, if you've never uh, competed in Kaggle competitions, I really uh, welcome you to try this out. There are different competitions that are going on, even million dollars uh, competition going on. You can check this out. You can see this Jane Strait uh, market forecasting. It's still going on. It's 120K. You can see Kowinski price is 1 million. And there are other models. Basically, if even if you just check the 
outputs or the submissions of the other people it helps in inculcating and improving your knowledge as well so this is quen 3 on kaggle i hope you really like it in the next video i'm going to talk about agents uh, on agno probably but let's see watch out the next video if you like a deep dive detail uh, discussion on quen 3 watch out this video else check out the other content on my channel and subscribe to my channel and i will see you next time